September 18, 2004, patriotic rallies were held all over northeastern China. On this date in 1931, Japanese troops exploded a bomb on the southern Manchurian railway tracks near Mukden. It was the start of the Manchurian incident. Every year, rallies are held all over so as never to forget this day, the day that sparked a long and devastating war between China and Japan. In northeastern China, anti-Japanese sentiment still remains. In one part of the city of Changchun stands an apartment building called the China-Japan Amity House. Every day a group of six seniors gather in front of the building and chat. They are all foster parents of war orphans. Japanese orphans left in China at the end of World War II. These men and women had saved their lives and raised them. Despite criticism for raising the children of the enemy, despite outright persecution, they persisted in protecting the children. The orphans raised so lovingly by these foster parents have since returned permanently to Japan. Parents and children are now separated. With the once abandoned orphans now back in Japan, it is the adoptive parents who have now been left back in China. Parents and children by virtue of the chaos of war. How have they fared in the 60 or so years since the end of the war? How have they adjusted? We were privileged to be given a glimpse into life at the China-Japan Amity House. Yuri Aoyama is one of the war orphans. She received permanent Japanese residency in 1993 and lives in Yokohama with her husband, who is Chinese. She has been unable to locate any blood relations. Living in her ancestral homeland had been a cherished dream, but neither she nor her husband has been able to find work, so they are living on welfare. Yuri and her foster mother, Xu Xian Li, 
When Yuri was left by the roadside at the age of two, she was rescued by Ms. Lee, who raised her in China. When she returned to Japan, Yuri promised Ms. Lee that once she had settled down, she would send for her. But in Japan, Yuri and her husband came face to face with some harsh realities. As older workers, unable to speak Japanese in a worsening economy, they were unable to find employment. Many of the war orphans who have returned to Japan complain that the government has provided insufficient linguistic training and job placement. Currently, 65% of the returnees are, like Yuri Aoyama, living on welfare. Tonariwa I'll send for you, she had promised her mother. But still, after more than a decade, she and her husband have their hands full trying to manage their own affairs. They can hardly send for her mother. Changchun City in the northeastern Chinese province of Jilin. Jilin used to be the capital of Japan's puppet state of Manchuguo. Many of the abandoned war orphans were born here. The China-Japan Amity House is located in the center of town. It was built by a Japanese philanthropist in 1990 as an expression of thanks to the foster parents of the war orphans. Yuri Aoyama's foster mother is one of the residents. Shu Xian Li, 80 years old. Her husband has passed away, and she lives here with her younger sister and her sister's husband. It was in the turmoil of war that she had saved Yuri's life. In 1944, at the age of 20, Ms. Lee had become pregnant for the first time. But one day, as she was hawking her wares in town, she met with sudden tragedy. In August of the following year, Soviet troops invaded Manchuria. Japanese living in Changchun tried desperately to flee.
some 200,000 died of starvation and cold. This photo gives a glimpse into a makeshift orphanage of those days. Here were left behind the children whose parents had died or abandoned them. Here in this alley, in the turmoil of war, Ms. Lee took charge of a Japanese baby girl left in the road. The girl was looking at her so sorrowfully, Ms. Lee simply could not leave her there. After being kicked in the lower abdomen by the Japanese police, Ms. Lee could never again conceive and bear her own child. But she took loving care of a Japanese girl. Even during the Cultural Revolution, when foster parents like Ms. Lee and her husband were persecuted as spies for Japan, they protected the girl strenuously. Now, more than a decade has passed since her daughter went to Japan. Ms. Lee's kidneys have been functioning poorly, and she now suffers from uremia. In August, her condition worsened. She could not keep down any food. On this day, she received a call from Japan. She revealed to Yuri that she did not have long to live. As soon as she heard that her mother's condition was worsening, Yuri decided to go to her. Previously, she had visited her mother only once every few years. It was difficult to manage financially. That was because her social welfare assistance was suspended for the period she was in China. Now, fearing that this might be her last chance to see her mother, she decided to visit China. In early September, Yuri visited the China-Japan Amity House for a 10-day stay. She had scrimped and saved a meager amount for this trip from her daily budget. The rest she borrowed from her daughter and from friends. Her mother was no longer able to go out and greet her. Uh, 
你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你你
。我想起来也挺难过，我妈妈拉过我挺不容易。另外，在这个那个社会哈、啊，就是这个嗯、呃、比较这个乱的时候，能够把我抚养成大，而且自己呢丈夫又被日本杀了，这个这个仇心里的。他非常难过，又又拉又捡了我，又把他抚养大。我讲这是一个伟大的母亲，所以说，我一直都挺尊重我的妈妈。记得，呃，七个菜。That very day, they promised each other they would always live together. 还给王大哥烧一烧。王大哥，知道吧？知道。完，我给小江他们给王大哥烧的纸还上的够。But now they have an unexpected worry to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Mayo's daughter says she wants to go to Japan. When the war orphans choose repatriation, they can take their children and their children's immediate family with them to live in Japan. Even for her daughter's upper middle class family, the opportunity to obtain permanent residency in Japan is an attractive one. Her daughter's husband, an engineer in a communications company, believes that he could get a high paying job in Japan and the chance to deal with new technology. Through中介人,中介人还有拿取一部分用地,这些事都是非常普遍的。像我以为我们这种优厚的条件的话,去的人非常少。所以我们也非常想就是抓住这次机会,就是上日本去学习学习。我们去东京对于孩子将来来说,
They had only their children in Japan to rely on, and hardly any money was sent. With Ms. Lee's uremia worsening, Yuri took her to the hospital. In China, the medical insurance system has gaps. Ms. Lee's medical expenses must be covered entirely out of pocket. One treatment costs the equivalent of more than 100 US dollars. That's about a month's living expenses. Ms. Lee can obtain treatment only by borrowing from relatives. The doctor told Yuri that if her mother's condition got any worse, she might not make it through the winter. If she is hospitalized and undergoes dialysis, there is the possibility that her condition will improve. But neither Ms. Lee nor Yuri can possibly afford the expense. <laughs> Yuri assembled a group of relatives to consider what to do about her mother. The children of Ms. Lee's younger sister, Yuri's first cousins. Yuri asked them to lend her enough money to cover hospital admission. A favorable response was not forthcoming. On the contrary, the cousins began to urge Yuri to take more responsibility. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> In mid-September, Yuri is visited by a couple. It is Meiao Fan and her husband, whose daughter's family want to move to Japan.
Mayao has been gleaning what information she can about Japan from other war orphans. Hearing that one of the repatriated orphans, Yuri, was back in China, she came by for a visit.反正怎么说呢我回去的时间也是可以说不算长也不算短我就十二年了但是我这时候只能谈到我自己的看法如果说单纯依靠这个平台依靠你们这个就是孤儿这个身份回去的话吧反正像你们俩是肯定回去不能
The two women have made up their minds to go to a country where they do not speak the language and have no friends. This has been a difficult choice. On this day, with her husband and her daughter's family, Mayao went to visit her foster father's grave. They planned to go to Japan as early as the next spring. Her adoptive father had raised her with great love and care, despite his own poverty. She seeks his permission to go to Japan. Ba 我妈妈愿意给我们去，我带着二七全部他们全家走。每年逢逢年过节，我来给你老人家来上上香来烧纸呢。我们为了孩子，我相信爸爸你应该理解我们，应该远走。Soon she will be saying goodbye to the good earth of her homeland. The day of Yuri's return to Japan. She wanted to give her mother some handmade home cooking for their final meal. She started preparations early in the morning. These dumplings are her mother's favorite. Ms. Lee stayed seated on her bed, not saying anything. Recently, Ms. Lee had been able to eat nothing but rice porridge. But on this day, she happily ate her daughter's home cooking. Thank you. 
Ich hm? oben vor der Tür. To come this time, Yuri had to use up all her savings and even borrow money. She is not sure when or if she will be able to return to China again. The two women realize that this may be their final parting. The other foster parents came out to see Yuri off. Thus ended Yuri Aoyama's ten day stay with her foster mother. China-Japan Amity House of Changchun City. Today, like most days, the foster parents of the war orphans lounge outside on the stoop. They have survived the travails of caring for the children of their country's former enemy. Though their adopted children are now living in Japan, these foster parents feel bound to them by a tie that transcends blood. And here, in this place, in China, they still wait for their children to come home.